Ukraine from FUFOR. Uh, and in this fifth tutorial about uh, learning uh, language C from zero, uh, I'll show you how to uh, save, how to open a file and how to write uh, things into, into a file, a text file. So that's very uh, useful kind of thing you want to be able to, to do. So I am starting from my previous loop.c uh, file from the tutorial number three which was actually printed out to uh, it was printing in the terminal command um, the result of a sinusoidal function so if i launch this file to show you it's a file that was actually um, okay maybe this file is not I need to compile it or something okay so this file here uh, takes out, writes out this sinus number of iteration and the result. Let's start from that. But instead of printing it in the terminal, I want to print it into a text file. So uh, first thing to do is that uh, it's actually quite simple to do that because the, uh, the the functions to open and close files are already integrated into the stdeo h library so make sure you have that at the top of your file um, now the instruction to be added to that is the following first we need to initialize my file um, in capital letter and don't forget you need to add a star after that it's actually a, a pointer so we initialize a file then you give it the name you want you can call it my file equal null so my file variable here is a pointer uh, of, well, the file type. Um, so I didn't explain yet what is a pointer, but this will come uh, after that. Um, if you want a really simple uh, explanation is that um, the, the way it works in C language is that uh, when you declare a variable, uh, every time you call a variable, you, you can also call a pointer to the variable. So it's not really the variable itself. It's some kind of indicator which uh, points to the location of your variable inside the memory. So, but anyway, you don't need, really need to know that here. Just need this instruction at, uh, at the top of your file to, uh, to be able to uh, define a file. And then we will open the file. So we call this file that we just uh, created, my file. And we use a function called fopen um, in, and we will uh, give it the name of the file we want to use. So let's just call it test.txt. Um, and the second instruction to give to that, it is very important, is how do you want to open this file? There are different modes to open the file. You have um, R is read only, so it will open the file, but just to read what's inside, it will not be able to write inside it. You have write mode, which uh, we allow you to write inside the file, but not to read the content. Um, you have write uh, R plus, R plus, which is um, which is read and write. So generally, you can use that. Uh, you have A, which is append. So if there is already some content inside your file, use the append mode to append to the content already existing. So for this example, let's use R plus. R plus, great. Uh, now the thing is, where is this, this file located? Well, if I don't add anything to this file, it will be located in the same folder than my, uh, my actual code. So in my CProg folder, I need to have this test.txt. Uh, if I wanted to put it in another folder, I could, for example, put um, like, I don't know, uh, I, let's say I create a folder called um, files and I could like that put a link to that. So this is a relative kind of link. And it, depending on the system you are, you, you, you have this kind of full uh, absolute pass so in Windows is C, uh, you, you have to input it like that, two dashes, uh, et cetera, et cetera, two dashes uh, until you find your file. But this is system dependent. So 
uh, it's better to use relative type of link because it will work with Windows, with Linux, with Mac OS. Uh, if you write absolute paths, it will not work with every system, so that will be uh, quite a pain to, to, to use. Okay, so we, we open the file. Now, next, next thing to do is we want to make sure that this, the program was actually able to find the file. Maybe the file doesn't exist, and in this case you'll have a problem. So let's use an if condition to check that um, it was able to open my file. So if uh, my file is uh, different, so exemption mark equal, different than no. This means that I have my file. I will uh, actually do what I want to do. So I will write some things. So for I will do this for loop inside. Else, so we're, we're using the if else condition that I talked about in the previous video. Else, um, else we will we will print. Um, we will print an instruction in impossible to open the file test.txt right so um, this condition um, will check if we were able to actually open this file or not and then it will tell us uh, if it was successful or not to do this and now the last thing to do is at the end we need to close the file don't forget uh, to close the file every time, every time you, you open it, you need to close it. So F close and then just my file. So that's it. Now let's see if it works. Um, and I, I have no uh, test.txt file. So probably I'll get this impossible to print this file. So let's try. GCC, um, okay, I didn't change the name. Loop.c, we should have saved that to another file, but anyway. Um, loop, okay. Um, let's try. Okay, so now I'm getting impossible to open the file test.txt because it, it doesn't exist simply. So this checking condition is very useful. Uh, otherwise, it will have some bugs into, into your program. Um, so, now, um, all the things I didn't talk about is that now I'm printing this to the screen. I'm not printing this to the file. So there is a very small modification to do to actually print that to the file, which is uh, the, just add an f. f print f is a very similar function. Uh, and the first instruction will be the name of the file, my file. So there are all the functions to write to files that you can check um, on the internet. This one is pretty useful because it's almost the same. It's just changing it by adding an F and the name of the file. So easily you can remember that. Um, okay, and now let's try to add a new text document that I will call test.txt. There's nothing inside that. And let's try to, um, to run again. Let's compile again. Let's run. Okay, still, still doesn't find my, uh, my file. So maybe test.txt. Ah, okay, I, I see. It's because actually I, if you look at properties and let's look at the details, this file is actually test.txt.txt. The extension is actually uh, by default. So just, just write test and this will become a test.txt. Right. Classic uh, mistake. Uh, let's try again. Okay, now I have nothing, which means that probably it worked. So let's go here, let's open this text. 
and you see that it works. I have my content written into the file. Now I'll show you um, another thing is what if I didn't want to create this, I want the software to create this text file. So let's delete that. Sorry, let's delete this. Um, and you can do that by simply changing the mode on which you open the file. If you open it in append mode, it will actually create the file um, when it launched the program. So let's try it. And you see that now the file appeared with the content inside. So it wrote, um, it wrote the content to my file. Okay, so that's all for this uh, fifth tutorial about reading and writing into text files. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.